In the workshop of renovating an old boiler part 9, the final steam test using my Stuart Series steam engine. I've pumped some water into the boiler and if you look at the water gauge you'll see that it's about three quarters full and now the burner's lit, it's just a waiting game until it raises steam. Which steam engine should I use to test the boiler? Well that's easy, I'm going to use my Stuart Sirius. When I first got this Stuart Sirius I initially made two videos about it but I've made a third one because I've modified the manifold. I fitted a Stuart displacement lubricator and a Stuart drain cock. This is a brand new Stuart Models displacement lubricator. And as usual, the rubber o-ring comes off stuck to the cap, but when I put it back in with some oil, it will stay where it's put. First of all though, I'm filling the displacement lubricator with steam oil. Steam oil is what you need to use in displacement lubricators, never use machine oil. In this part of the clip, you can see that I've put the o-ring back in the slot in the top of the lubricator, and here I'm replacing the cap. I do like the Stuart lubricators, they just are an iconic shape, and I always use original Stuart ones. Well, most of the time anyway. And in case you wonder what the tap's for, this is to regulate the amount of oil that gets fed to the engine. I find that opening this tap just one turn supplies sufficient oil. Why am I relighting the burner? Well, I didn't like the position of it, it was too far into the boiler. It was making a bit of a funny noise, and it wasn't burning cleanly. When I sniffed the top of the chimney, I could smell incomplete combustion. Health and safety warning, try and avoid sticking your nose over the top of a hot chimney. It's certainly not healthy to inhale the fumes coming from a gas-fired boiler chimney. Oh yes, and I forgot, it can set your nose on fire, so an afternoon in A&E needs to be avoided. Now that the burner's in the correct position, steam has been raised very quickly. Nothing's really showing on the pressure gauge, but here I'm opening the drain cocks turning the engine by hand and as you can see there's quite a lot of water coming out of the drain cocks. This is a steam engine from a World War II generating set. That's why there's a drain cock on the inlet manifold. Because originally, as part of the generating set, the steam pipe went from the boiler straight to the manifold and the pressure gauge was on the manifold. So the manifold was always at boiler pressure. But now the steam valve on the engine is fully open and the pressure is regulated by the valve on the boiler mainly because I'm using a piece of silicone rubber tubing to connect the two together. I've left this clip running for a while, so that you can see that initially water came out of the drain cocks, but now the cylinder is warming up, and it's mainly steam with a little bit of water coming out of the drain cocks. And just in case you don't know, the purpose of having drain cocks on steam engines is to let the water out of the cylinders, because without this there would be a hydraulic lock in both cylinders and the engine would not turn over at all. Now when I turn over the engine with the drain cocks closed, it starts to run under its own steam. I notice that the drain cock on the left hand side as you look at it is a little bit leaky. I'll give this some attention at a later date. Because a dribbling drain cock is very undesirable. Looking at the pressure gauge you will see that the pressure is now just under 40 pounds per square inch. And currently the gas tap on the canister is open fully. Later on in the video I will be closing the gas tap a little bit to make the burner operate with a bit less noise. That's enough talking from me for a while, I'll be back later on.
Now I've turned the gas off. As you can see, there's no longer a flame in the boiler. And this is the gas tank adapter on the other end of the pipe. You must always remove the gas tank adapters when you finish your run. As you can see in this clip, there's nothing really showing on the gauge, but the engine's still quite happy to run. This is a lovely engine. This engine was originally part of a portable World War II generating set, and I wish I had the rest of the set. Now that the steam run's finished, I'm using compressed air to blow through the engine to get rid of any water in there. And this is essential when you're using a cast iron engine. Cast iron and water equals rust where you don't want it. I'm also flushing the engine through using some WD-40. I squirt it into the tube and then put some more air through the engine. And finally, I pump some steam oil into the pipe and blow that through the engine. And you must always do this when you finish steaming a cast iron engine. I know this video is about steam testing a model boiler, but it's also been a very good excuse to play with my Stuart Sirius. But that's it for this one now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.